obviously this kind of religious freedom meant the separation of church and state um, on the federal level. It also was a key contributing factor then to the notion of denominationalism. And the heart of denominationalism is this, that one denomination before the law and maybe even before God is just about as good as another denomination. We talked about this a little bit before. Is it true church and false church, or is it purer church and less pure church? Um, what Americans had come to by the time of the writing of the Constitution was a conviction, while the differences between Presbyterians and Congregationalists and Episcopalians and maybe even Baptists, there was a little debate about that, but maybe even Baptists, while these differences were significant, we want to say we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And therefore, our divisions, as an old friend of mine once said, the walls between us don't reach to heaven. Um, and that's the attitude of denominations. Uh, we take some of our differences seriously, but we don't believe that those differences divide us from God. Uh, and that's a whole new way of thinking. The church, Christian people had never thought that way down until the 17th or 18th century. But the separation of church and state in America reinforces denominationalism so that more and more we cooperate with one another and appreciate one another. That's one of the effects of the separation of church and state in America.